being a stay-at-home mom is not a privilege. It's a financial partnership. A partnership where you trade free labor for his paid labor. Just ask yourself, if something happened to your significant other, would you be able to still maintain and take care of your children alone? The majority of the money that we make as women is being reinvested back into our households and our families, leaving us less money to invest, less money for retirement, and less time and less work out. This whole like trad wife life thing that has been emerging, it's so scary to me because some women are actually buying it. I, I understand why it seems appealing to a lot of women. And I'm not saying that it doesn't work out. I know several women who are doing it and it's working out for them. There's a few things that I really wish women would know more about uh, before they sign up for this uh, financial agreement because that's what it is. Please go watch Lorraine's video. I love her. She also talks a whole lot about how um, moms can protect themselves financially, especially if they're stay-at-home moms. How much, you know, you never want to put yourself in a situation where you have to depend financially on a man. As we know men up and cheat or they abuse or if you if you know my content y'all so many men who are literally hiding money from their wives or spending money on other women they have secret bank accounts they have secret houses they have secret families and meanwhile like the stay-at-home mom is just thinking everything's cool and then one day boom life over like that comfy life over and a lot of women end up homeless because here's the thing even if these men are never abusive never you know emotionally mentally whatever the system itself is rigged against women and what i have seen a lot of my friends do even when they wanted to stay at home with those kids and you know made it so that they could kind of stay home they always had a part-time job or something because women's careers take a huge hit when they have children and a lot of them will never go back to that trajectory that their career was working on uh, after. They get penalized constantly. I mean, besides the fact that they're already set up to have so many more obstacles than men, like the most mediocre, like talentless bum. You just soar to the top, you know? Especially if there's like a boys club culture. They go play sports together, they go watch watch sports together, they play golf, they go climbing, or they're frat bros, or you know, whatever. They're gonna make more money. And again, you know, the, the, the wage gap between men and women is still disgustingly large, but it's way larger between white women and then black women, indigenous, and other women of color, right? That gap just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. All women are gonna be discriminated against in the workplace. Because all of these places are still bro cultures and even if they're run by women, a lot of these women are worse than men because they still act that way with that mindset. I know one of my good friends, I was like, so, cause she doesn't make good money at this extra job. She's living a very good life, nice house, husband has a lot of money and i'm like are you just doing this because you just want to be outside the house because also she's always worked she's like well yeah partly i need to talk to adults i need to have my sense of purpose i need to have my own life but also i don't ever want to put myself in a position where if something happens in my marriage and we end up not together that my career is over and like lorraine was talking about once you exit the workforce you know, you don't have any actual money coming in anymore unless you have passive income. And by the way, Lo uh, Lorraine talks about that. Lorraine has like all kinds of, like, I have learned so much from her already. She also has a book um, that she just came out with. But passive income, money that you can make from the home, having multiple streams of income, you cannot rely on men to take care of you. And even if you have like the best partner in the world who would never screw you over and who doesn't spend most his money on his stupid hobbies that are ridiculously expensive and time consuming or on, I don't know, self-destructive hob hobbies or habits or whatever, like drinking, smoking, or whatever, or doesn't spend all his money on game systems or gambling or following fish or the Grateful Dead and whoever's left of them around the country to see him for like the 197th time. Even if he's not spending a lot of the family's income on himself and he's not, doesn't have a secret family or a girlfriend he's buying diamonds for while you barely can feed your children. Even if he's doing none of that and it is an amazing partner, if that man dies or if that, if you just get it, have a friendly divorce, 
you are so screwed. Unless he has like an amazing insurance policy, like of life insurance policy, or you have an ironclad prenup where you get paid not only like percentage of blah, 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 but also recognizes all the years you were not making money at your own job. Like unless you have like the most protection ever, you are vulnerable to getting screwed. I'm actually gonna include a link to one of my other uh, mutuals who is a stay-at-home mom and she just made an amazing video about how much stay-at-home moms are exploited. And this has been my experience. Like I know that I am child-free by choice, but I do have a lot of insight on what I see happening to different moms in my life. Moms who, you know, cause a lot of times, a lot of mothers end up hanging out with mothers in their similar situations. Well, I got single mom friends. I got, you know, I've got the whole salad. And what I have noticed is that the stay-at-home moms with no other income at all have a blank check of martyrdom and sacrifice. They work longer hours than anyone I know. They're up before everybody, they're working all day, and then they work, and they literally are working until the moment they they rest in bed. And even then they're probably planning and planning and planning. Okay, la, 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 la. what are we gonna for lunch? And even when the kids finally get off to school and they're out of the freaking house, they are doing PTA, they're doing dental appointments, they're doing, you know, the, they're chauffeurs driving these kids everywhere for these extracurricular activities. They're taking care of everything. And they're not getting paid for any of that. And none of that is getting saved for retirement. None of that is, um, they have nothing. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I'm saying, A, you have to have a partner that truly sees you as an equal and a human being and loves the crap out of you and also understands patriarchy, just cares about it, you know? And also, you have some sort of system in place, ironclad legal agreements, so that when this man screws you over, if he does, or if he just dies, or gets sick, or falls off a roof while he's fixing something, and now he's disabled, and he's the, he's the breadwinner. Like, I don't know if y'all know this, but disability, like, no one's taking care of y'all. If you are all dependent on one person, and that person is a man, please, we did not get this far. Women have always worked. Women have not been paid for work for very long. I literally have to remind a couple of my friends who are stay-at-home moms on a regular basis how much I made as a nanny with one, one child I had to look after. No cleaning, no grocery shopping, none of the other stuff. I wasn't a maid, I wasn't a schmegs worker, I wasn't a psychologist to this man, did no emotional labor. None of the mental load, literally did nothing but watch, you know, Shrek. 50 times, I could I could literally recite that movie. All of them. Take this three-year-old on hikes, put her down for a nap, $200 a day for eight hours. Women who stay at home, you need to put a financial value on your labor. What would y'all be paying all those people who actually get paid outside the home to do those things? Because I swear to God, so many men, because they've never done these things, and they also, because they don't want to. They do not understand value until you put a price tag on it. It can just easily be like, oh, well, like, you know, what else are you doing? And like my mutual in the other video I'm tagged, you know, vacation for moms, especially stay-at-home moms, I didn't vacation. I have never seen a mother come back from vacation rested. Anything, she's like super excited to get the hell back home because kids are often very discombobulated on vacation. There's no routine, the planning, like all this stuff. And she, you know she's doing all of it. Please do not put yourself in these vulnerable situations and don't believe these stupid accounts that are like, I'm a child, blah, blah, blah. If you're gonna follow those accounts, at least follow ones that are realistic, that talk about what they're doing with their money. Unless she's got a trust fund, that woman is vulnerable to getting screwed.